right, you guys ready to start? I'll take a look at it. Jeez. Sure. Let's oh. go. Welcome back to episode 23 of Magic Pixel. 23 is right, right? Oh, yes. No, oh, yeah. 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 fucking knows, bro. Time's an illusion. Uh, yeah. I, I hope you guys are doing well. Jeremy's got his Mac Chuckum. Elder, <laughs> Elder is still sick. Uh, so he's out of commission for now. In fact, it seems like today he was like super sick. I saw him say it in the chat, but he was not feeling so hot. So, uh, yeah, he's pretty sick still, and uh, we're in the Underdark, which is, it should be a lot of fun. Ringe is really tired. Is Hanzo going to do the recap today? Of course. Oh, that'd be sick. Yes. <laughs> Jesus. Sure. Do we have anything fancy to announce? Did you did you buy anything, Hanzo? Oh, uh, to, get, to let Hanzo have time to be prepared for the recap, Anthony can talk about his dice tray. Nice, dude. I got a new dice tray from Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, congrats, wow. dude. That actually looks really clean. Yeah. That looks great. Yeah. That looks really cool. It's actually and really cool. You have a shit out of dice. Of dice. Yeah, this holy. is like, this is two sets of cracking dice. You nice. know, hit us up. And I have a third set that I couldn't fit onto, unfortunately. Yeah. Nice. Those hand man shows better than 95% of the FGC commentators. I'm proud of them. That was pretty good. You yeah. know... <laughs> I was about to say something I should have Sh Shout outs. <laughs> shout outs to Blue. <laughs> shout outs to Broken Tear. Daba D, Daba D. The, the, best, the best mouse pads in the Octagon. <laughs> in the Octagon. <laughs> I thought you were going to hit him with the Gillette. HyperX, the best a man can get. I don't know. The <laughs> best a man. Manscaped. The only dice Cheater tough balls. enough for the Octagon. <laughs> the only razor tough enough for your Balls are gone. <laughs> <laughs> your balls are gone. I don't want yeah. my balls to be gone. <laughs> you killed Jeremy. Uh, whatever. Uh, I had a second one left right there. <laughs> this, this should be the show, honestly. <laughs> we just uh, read really bad sponsor reads. I'll do the recap. Yes, we were yeah. not joking about that. I would love you to do the recap. <clears throat> okay, right. um, episode 22. Close up on a talk. He was... <laughs> trying to get out of thieves guild and then we lied and we left because we <laughs> stole the sun relic and wodan's with us and no one knew and then um, <laughs> we got confronted by the boss of the thieves guild and he wants my the dragon whose name's sunny who we immediately drugged as post-birth um a talk has a dragon now um we went to the store i put a, a hit on a very powerful member of a government Yes. Um, I taught the dragon baby how to gamble. I beat. <laughs> it's all from my perspective so far. Uh, I beat uh, um, Alexander Alexander in cards. cards, and then uh, Soren went to the guild, and he got uh, the anvil and his sword and stuff, and uh, he also gave drugs to Glotch. <laughs> And I had um, drugs stolen from me. <laughs> how come you can't pronounce any of my NPC names? Is this how mad I don't write them down if they're not with me? <laughs> if I don't know. What? You um, met Glostick. You met him. Glostick. Um, let's see. The sun relic, it can like grow plants and stuff, and it's like actual sunlight. Oh, I forgot to make that item. Um, and the armor. Then we're like, hey, we're going to go to the Underdark because everyone hates us. And um, we did go to the Underdark. And um, Meniscus bought picture books to uh, teach people language. Um, Not people, dragons. Dragons language. And then we went to the Underdark and it was really chill and everyone was having a great time. And then I got lit on fire by a skull. And then uh, salamanders, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah, yep. fire salamanders yeah. yep. beat the shit out of... <laughs> Soren specifically. Yep. Uh, and then we killed them, and then we saw some graffiti on the wall prior to the fight, and then an orc, what we think is an orc, is calling out to us, telling us that crust does not suck eggs. Troglodyte um, egg. Troglodyte eggs, yeah. Yes. Because that, because that's what is on the wall, and I don't know if crust is spelled with a C or K at the start, and everyone's gonna make fun of me if I assume. So. Come on, give it to me. Which one? It's K. All right, well done. Yeah. Bingo. <laughs> Mac Chuckle. 
Right, and that is where we're going to pick up here on Magic Pixels Session 23. Of course, you were called out to by a pair of orcs uh, who did say crust does not suck eggs. They go, hey, did you write this on the wall? Nah, bro, it wasn't us. We're, we're new. We just came to the Underdark like an hour ago. Do we see them? Or are they around the bend? No, they have come uh, like to the point where they are like uh, revealing themselves to you now. So like uh -huh. you guys, I know like, I went down the right path a little bit more. Yeah. And they are kind of uh, like they're kind of still at the fork in the road or in the cave, but they're actually like in vision of you. And I go, yeah, if you're new to the underdog, why don't you come with us and talk to Krusk? Uh, hey, for the record, we're like big. Krusk seems like a nice guy or whatever. We're just like on our way. Is it cool if we just go or do we have to go talk to him? The underdog is filled with many dangers and hazards you are unfamiliar with. Perhaps we can help in exchange for a favor. What kind of favor? We would rather have Krusk explain it himself, but there's a little deep gnome that has been causing us trouble. Perhaps you could find it to take care of it. I just mm. look around. Uh, how far is your village? It's about 15 minutes down this way. Not very far, and plus, you look burnt as fuck, so maybe you could sleep here too. Sounds good to me, bro. I mean, yeah, I'm burnt as fuck. Y'all got any food? Of course. You like fungus. Right. Hmm? Did, uh, he say, did he say fingers? Fungus. Oh, fungus. fungus. Oh. <laughs> Cooked early. Food. Mushrooms are fungus. What? Or fungus fungi. Of all kinds of types. Mac chicken fingers, all kinds. That sounds That's like really a pretty good deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that sounds good. Do they fire. point the same way that we're going, or the other no, way? No, no, they're like down the other fork in the road. Oh. They're down to the left route. Uh, I'm oh. okay with this, because I think they maybe lack the faculties to orchestrate a betrayal. <laughs> what is that? Small, small I'm stage whispering. <laughs> <laughs> I just nod. Yeah, bro, I'm with it. The faculties to... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, all right. words. I hope we go there and it's a utopia. <laughs> just, I didn't know this lizard read so many books. Uh, I'm forced to every night. My dreams are another what? prison that I live in. <laughs> to the service of mother. Look up. What a nerd. <laughs> Don't sound so happy about it, bro. Jeez. Sounds sounds Can great. Can I go to school too? <laughs> no. Oh, that was cold blooded. Sonny kind of turns to to you and talk, and he goes, "Will I be visited in my dreams?" Ah, uh, who knows? You are, um, you are quite unique, I suppose. Mother might take an interest in you, but uh, I don't know. I'll ask. Okay, and uh, the the orc follow us. I'll follow. All right. I all. Uh, I'll be like. <laughs> I'll be the one. Uh, Wodan, what do you think about <laughs> this situation? <laughs> uh, I don't know why you guys took me down here. To be honest. Hey, you know you We're and Dal Brock have got to gotta sort that out. I don't know. <laughs> you told me that I was supposed to go join a monastery or something. You gave me this dagger. I don't think this dagger is gonna help me very much down here. Yeah, it's on Dollar Dollar, Brock up. <laughs> Dollar, will you do, do you have a plan? I I turn over to Sora and is like, do you think he'd be do you think he'd be uh maybe uh safe to walk back and uh by himself? Uh, I don't want to walk back by myself, no. I think the answer is I know you're talking to Soren, but I'm really close to you and I can hear everything you say. I think there's about a zero percent <laughs> chance uh he'll be safe to walk back, yes. All right, bud. Listen here. If we ever get into any sort of trouble, just stick by your boy and just don't even try to like don't don't make any funny moves. All right. You're not gonna leave me with these orcs, right? As long as you follow with us, yeah. I mean, like, cool. That's a good idea. It makes a well, lot I mean, of sense. Oh. What do you mean? <laughs> I don't. I'm not an orc. They, will they said they have up. fingers and fungus. I don't like either of those things. 
Hey, mushrooms are good. Hey, you know, Wodan, you and Dalabrock are basically family. You guys are like brothers, the closest people on the planet. He would never do you wrong. Okay. Can you give me a persuasion check? <laughs> do I believe him? I'm going to roll two. I believe, I believe that. <laughs> I believe that. Soren believes that. I don't, but Soren does. That was a persuasion. Yeah, that's why I asked for persuasion, not deception. Ten. Ten? All right. He still looks a little unsure about that. I'll put my hand on his shoulder and look him. I'll look what? down at him directly to his eyes and just be mm -hmm. like, I understand you don't like fungus or fingers, but mm -hmm. I, I understand that you didn't like being dead. So maybe you can grow to like them. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Give me an intimidation check. Why? That's an easy. <laughs> this poor guy. Uh, natural one, so zero. God, oh, you're my. a seven foot lizard. <laughs> you start screaming. Oh no. Oh no. And he looks a little bit like more panicky than he was before. Not a little bit more panicky, but kind of a lot more panicky. And he kind of grabs Dollar Brock. He kind of grabs your arm. He goes, "Don't, don't let them keep me here, please. All right, let's go." I have Listen, inflicted emotion. You, you died once before, you'll be just fine. You're a lot stronger than... <laughs> Can you guys stop reminding me that I died? That's really... It's kind it of emotionally traumatic. You know, Jeremy... Uh, so you died once before, <laughs> you'll be just fine. I feel very okay. happy about how I handled this dragon now. <laughs> By comparison. <laughs> Oh, man. I'd rather take the dragon than fucking Wodan at this point. Jesus, honest. this is supposed to be your man. How it all comes crashing down quickly. And the orcs kind of go back. Are you, are you okay back there? There's a lot of chit chat. We need yeah. to get going. We're cool, bro. Cool. I'll just follow them wherever the fuck they're yeah, going. Yeah, yeah. I'm walking around. Right. Yeah. I can't wait so for Hanzo Gonzo to fucking orc. <laughs> so you guys traverse about 15, 20 minutes uh, through the other, the left passageway in the fork of the Underdark that you guys came to initially. Um, and the cave uh, kind of opens up to a, a pretty decent size, like, cavern society. Uh, you kind of take a quick look around, and there's a lot of, like, buildings, kind of rudimentary, a lot of tents and stuff like that. There's nothing too fancy going on here, but you can see there's a bunch of orcs for sure. Uh, there's a couple of bigger orcs as well. Can somebody make me, or give me a nature check? Sure. Uh, no. I have really good nature. Nine. <clears throat> nature or history? Either one. Nine. Um... 25 nature. Okay. Jeez. What was your sword? Nine. 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 It. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Um, I mean, yeah, if y'all don't want to roll, it's fine. I don't know. It's good with me. Uh, I'm good. Okay. Let me not do let's that. Let's get actually. along for the ride, as per usual. Let me not get around. <laughs> Ooh, look at the shiny. <laughs> Is there shiny things around? Um, there's a, there's a few shiny things, actually. There's, uh, in the caverns itself, and different, like, stalactites and stalagmites, you can see, um, they're not too frequent, but there are some here and there. Um, like, little crystal clusters, basically, um, that look, uh, like they would shine. Some of them actually, like, dim and bright with, uh, time, and just, like, kind of sporadically. Um, and you don't see any rhyme or reason to the timing of it at all, and it just seems to kind of fluctuate. Uh, but yeah. I and will the, use my shatter spike to try to break one of these off. One of the okay. flashing crystals. You're gonna throw it at the ceiling? Mm, oh, they're on the ceiling? Fuck. <laughs> no, there, there's some that are on the ground, too. Okay. Yeah, they, it, it's on board. Board. I was like, I'm high. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Just oh. randomly. Whoosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's really strong. He could do it. Yeah. Um, give me an athletics check as you go and do that. Um, so for the uh, nature history checks, so nine um, Soren, they look like a, they're kind of bigger orcs. They definitely have like a, a kind of like a dark blue grayish skin, um, and they're a little bit bigger on average. They're also less frequent than the regular orcs, who here are mainly like green uh, skin, and uh, but they, they definitely seem to more acclimated to the underdark as well. Um, a talk, sorry, I blinked for a second. Um, with that twenty five, you know these are orogs. Um, orcs that had lived in the Underdark, and basically that, that's kind of where their origin was, and they've become acclimated, and they've kind of become tougher just because of the nature of their environment. And they have made their way back to the surface, like you know there's Orog on the regular surface as well of the world, but their main home and where their origin is is in the Underdark itself. <clears throat> How, in general, like average height are they? Average height of the Orogs, I would say about nine feet. Jesus. 
Yeah, they're they're very tall. What's up uh, over there, meniscus? Twenty three. Twenty three. Okay, so you uh, take out your shadow spike real quick and just go right into one of these crystal bursts and uh, give me a dexterity saving throw. Fuck. Uh, that is a sixteen. Sixteen. Okay. So as you uh, slash into one of these, you can see uh, as soon as you break into the crystal, a big flash of light just comes like a flashbang at you. And you manage to like shield your eyes real quick and it doesn't burn or anything like that. Um, you, you, know, you are not blinded for any period of time or something like that. But you now know if you're going to take the Shatter Spike to these crystal clusters, which do break off. There's a small piece of the crystal that does break off. Um, they will flash of light uh, very, very brightly. Ooh, can... Do they look like they're out of power, or like are they multi multi use? Like, can I use it again later for the ones that broke off? Give me an Arcana check. Oh, oh he's great at these. <laughs> oh, whoops. Uh, sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Um, if you were to like break them again with enough force, they would put out another flash or two. You probably say with the the small crystal cluster that you did break off, you could probably break them once or twice more again to create that flashbang. All right, I will take those to use for later. All right. Flashbang crystals. Mm-hmm. Nice do that. It's got a flashbang? Yeah. All right. Yeah, and besides that, it's mainly just been, like, uh, like I said, like, Ten's kind of rudimentary setup here, and they take you to uh, pretty much, like, the back of this cavern, where a kind of more ornate setup is, a bigger Type Ten, and an actual, like, solid building kind of carved into the cavern itself. And they go, wait here, I'll get across. And uh, they kind of leave you guys here in uh, the front of this more cavernous type structure. Do you guys want to do anything while you wait? <clears throat> so what's what's near around us as we're waiting? Did we just walk through like a fucking town? Or... Mm -hmm. Okay. Up yeah, it's town. a pretty basic town. You can uh, spot like uh, a couple of shops here and there, mainly like uh, like tents outside. That are selling small wares and goods, kind of like some food. You see a lot of fungus and stuff like that. A lot of uh, these big, these big like um, stalks. You guys can be nature checks as well if you want to identify those stalks um, and different plant material. Um, there's some meat. Uh, they definitely don't seem like usual surface animals. Um, some definitely seem like kind of mutated cattle um, that you can find around as well. That's sixteen. Know, 15 nature. Into 16. the Maya Conzo. 15 nature. I was mumbling. 15 and 16? Okay. Um, these 19. are barrel stalks. 19? Yeah, so you would know as well. These are what they're called barrel stalks. They're large cast-shaped fungus, um, and they can be tapped and drained for fresh water that is stored within. So this is uh, one of the primary sources of water in the Underdark. Can I go, while we wait real quick while this, they're gathering this dude, can I go buy some of these casts? Uh, like the, the fungus itself? Uh, yeah, you can go up and uh, inquire about it. Sure. Yeah. And it's a, yeah, there's an orc. It's a, kind of like a little bit runt size. He seems like some, one of the shorter orcs here, but that still means he's like six and a half feet tall. So he's still way tall. taller than me. Like three <laughs> feet or whatever. He's like way taller. <laughs> but you've seen, you know, up to, to nine, ten feet tall uh, folks around here. Yeah. And goes on, how may I help you? Uh, yeah, hey, how much is, like, one of those stock things? Can I just keep using that for water over and over? Is it, like, a limited amount? How does it work? Oh, uh, the barrel stocks. We usually don't sell the whole stock, but uh, I could make a deception if you need it. Uh, usually it contains around, it, it could be anywhere from, uh, like, 8 to 12 gallons of water. Yeah, we got, like, a party of five people, seven people. So mm. we need, like, a lot of water. So is that, like, one of those stocks probably good for seven people? Yes, I'm, usually you won't need about a gallon of water, uh, you know, for every couple of days at the very least, you know, if you want to stretch it out. So, between seven people, I can sell you one of the bigger ones, you know, for around 45 gold. Well, we don't have any other ways to get water. Sure, yeah, it sounds good, bro. I'll hand <coughs> over. How much is it? Do you say 75? Or 40, it's 45. 45, okay, yeah, sure. I hey, Give me an inside check. Sure. Uh, natural one plus five six. Yeah, I mean, this is with the amount of water you're getting, it seems like a great deal. Yeah, sure does. All right, 
It's like, <laughs> are we buying the fucking uh, what is that? The Fiji of water? Yeah. Just <laughs> incredibly like Boston, expensive. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it, it's more. It's more the fact that you know he's taking advantage of a tourist. Upcharge. Really. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. The upcharge. Um. So uh, he, he exchanges the big like uh, the barrel stock, and he gives you like a little um, carrying case type thing for it as well. It kind of looks like one of the things you hold maps in. It's a very like long barrel stock, but it's got like a little bit wider um, body to it because it does or uh, is shaped like a cask. Uh, anybody else want to do anything specific? Um, you guys is there? There's just a bunch of big ass fucking orcs running around near us. Mm -hmm. Is anyone looking at us? Everyone? Oh yeah, of course. Definitely a whole anyone, lot of eyes on you guys. Does anyone seem it's... kind of like subtly hostile? Does anybody have like a closed fist? Like who are these intruders? Kind of deal. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you know, uh, in general, that orcs are—they're not averse to violence, um, and just in general, a lot of the times they use their size to intimidate other beings and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And considering a lot of you are shorter than a lot of the orcs here, they definitely feel confident. They don't really know your capabilities as warriors, um, so they, there's mm -hmm. definitely a lot of people eyeing you uh, menacingly. I take note of uh, a good amount of like variety of orcs. Just for my, uh, just like as a mental image, so I can transform into one just in case. Uh, okay. Is there, uh, uh, is it just all orcs? So there's no outsiders whatsoever, pretty much. They yeah, from what you stuff, right? see, not really. There doesn't seem to be like any, uh, like goblins or like humans, halflings, nothing like that. And, uh, Meniscus, give me a history check. Sure. I'm, all right, never mind. Oh, that's bad. Four. Four, yeah. From what you could tell, there doesn't seem to be any surface folk that you've seen here. Um, and yeah, you, you are not too keen on the Underdark races to really try to pick out any of them. But they, there doesn't seem to be any like folk or that are of origin or species that you haven't seen on the, uh, the surface world either. Okay. Um, one more question. Uh, I, I want to use the talking stone to Shava. Okay. Ask, and I'm just, uh, have you ever seen these? Uh, and I, I'm just pretty much just gonna describe the orcs. Uh, eight foot tall orcs. Uh, they're they're gray, right? <laughs> gray skin. Yeah, they're, they're like dark blue gray. Um, yeah, she, it's like the middle of the night. She's like trying to sleep. <laughs> also, I'm in the underdark. <laughs> Mom, is that you? How did you get? Why did you go to the underdog? I just followed everyone else. <laughs> 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 you must be careful down there. There is uh, kind of how you can get to some of the places that you've been before. So I highly recommend traversing very carefully down there. Um, the creature you're asking about, I believe, is an Orog. It is a, a kind of an evolution of an Orog that grew in the Underdark. Are they any bit hostile? Or maybe, a, you know, anything particular about them? Um, they are acclimated very well to the Underdark, and the Underdark is a harsh environment, so because of that, they are ones that aren't going to put up with any bullshit, and they definitely will jump to violence if you show any type of hostilities towards them. So, just be careful, will you? Alright, thank you, Mom. I mean, Shava, but... Mm. I'm going back uh, to sleep. I strap the giant water cask to the very buff, strong shoulders of Alexander. He accepts it with no regards. Oh. <laughs> I just strap it. Uh, I draw two cards. Min oh, Jesus. <laughs> Meniscus, do not tell this woman where we are, please. But she's from around here, I think. It's she more be helpful. Of a security precaution. I can be helpful. Okay, uh, do you think I could take one on, one of these guys? Yes, but the whole village would be inadvisable. Hmm, what if I did that thing in the kitchen? It would take five minutes. Uh, <laughs> for I don't know how to... I'm just prepping. I'm not Fantasizing get... about mass murder is probably not the most healthy of <laughs> pursuits. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, like, the next day, sometimes you're in the shower, you're like, man, I could have totally fucking killed all those people or whatever. Like, sometimes it happens, but you shouldn't 
don't encourage it. I think you guys yeah, talk about good. murder a lot. You know, Who you know, Wonan. Just imagine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I take out my knife. <laughs> I turn to him. Shh. Just imagine yeah. you're on like a farm you're somewhere, so buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Milk of a cow somewhere. You could have been having a good life. <clears throat> Why didn't you take me to a farm? I was willing to start my life over anywhere except for here. I tried. It's all Dollar Brock's fault. All right. Hey, it's cross go round. Where's he at? <laughs> <laughs> but before before we uh, go there, I just want to know what these orcs are like equipped with. Do they have like? Do they look destitute and like nomadic or or like um like well equipped? fucking soldiers and shit like that no they, they doesn't yeah, seem to be too like they, they don't seem to be super well equipped they i wouldn't say they're like super destitute either their their weapons and stuff are definitely basic um but they don't seem like rusted or chipped okay. like they, they're not on some dark sun shit you know what i'm saying but they also don't have any fancy weapons or anything like that it's all like very basic either great axes or battle axes and stuff like that nothing oh. nothing special from what you've seen but nothing like that's gonna break on the next hit either. Um, I was curious. So as you uh, take a survey of the area, um, you will see the two orcs that uh, led you here kind of come back and they go, "Oh, I hail the honorable chief Krosk!" And uh, this big ass orog comes out, and yeah, you can see this. This orog is like eleven foot tall, like he is a big fella. Um, and he comes out and goes, "Adventurous." Nice to make your presence. What are you doing in the underdog? Hey, we're headed uh, to like uh you know a town. Just you know, headed over uh to meet up with somebody, do some trade, you know, explore. Mm, exploration here is um uh, an ambitious uh, endeavor. You may need help, you may need information. And you can see also, uh, he kind of scratches his face for a second, and on his hand, like, his whole hand, every single finger, has this, like, real crude ruby ring on it. Um, and he mm. puts his hand back and goes, We could offer information, gems, maybe even escort, if you could take care of a problem for us. Yeah, they said there's, like, a gnome or whatever. We're trying to go to, uh, Mantle Dareth. Are you familiar? <laughs> yes. Mantle Dareth is very, uh permit trading outposts in this region of the underdog uh, do you all he kind of like looks about all of you he goes mm, are you all capable swimmers <clears throat> yes yeah mm, well, oh yeah well i will tell you that the waters in the underdog much like every other area contain creatures that are going to try to kill you so if you want to put your bare bodies in the deep water, by all means. However, Mantle Dareth is sectioned off. It is an island of some sorts. So you will need some type of transportation or swimming capabilities to get there. You could provide that if you would take care of this Snarfiblin for us. Snarfiblin, eh? Mm, Wait yes. a minute. Snarfibbler. I've heard of these before. Actually, yeah. I probably Meniscus hasn't, but... <laughs> is, it the same? is it the same as pretty much my master? Yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. Um, Just be like, Nanf yeah, I'll be like, what's yeah. his uh, what's his deal? What's he up to? Where can we find him? He's been kind of a pain in the ass of this village for a few days now. Uh, he's been writing that I suck troglodyte eggs everywhere. And we see that he is uh, most likely... Held up somewhere in the barrel stock forest. It's a small cluster of plant life here in about an hour or two from here. Has he, like, done anything besides write bad words about you? Like, has he killed somebody? Has he, like, burnt something? Arson? Thievery? He has been picked off our orc friends and family one by one with his live traps and whatnot. Alright, for sure. Well... Uh, yeah, for transportation, maybe some other kind of, uh, rewards. I think we could probably <clears throat> handle it. Uh, my honorable King Karask. That you... is not my title nor my name. Krask. 
Ah, uh, uh, what uh what is your title? Chief. Chief. Chief Cross. Yes. Um how long have you been here? Hmm. As long as I can remember really, so about thirty four years. Ah, and this is a new problem? Yes. Okay. No right. Yeah. You also all look like you've already felt some of the wrath in the underdog. Feel free to rest up here before going. For sure. Can do. <clears throat> Thanks, Chief. Where are we resting? They will have the guest cave made up for you. <laughs> and you go. <laughs> the guest you cave. <laughs> you see the two orcs uh, that kind of let you all hear immediately kind of like rush off towards a small little cavern to the side of this like uh, main headquarters type building and uh, begin to do stuff over there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll ask Cross. I'm like, hey, our friend here, the lizard guy, he's pretty good with maps or whatever. Do you guys have like a map of the area and where we need to go? That'd be helpful. Of the immediate region, we could provide directions. We don't really have a cartographer in our midst, so nothing made up, but we could put you in contact with someone that will get you there. Or at least Perfect. tell you how to get there. Sounds That's good. That's fine. No right. <clears throat> no. Excuse me will I go fancy more rubies. And he kind of goes and walks away. I'm trying right. to see if I have rubies. I don't think I do. Um, all right, I'll gather the gang and start heading towards the guest cave. Yes, the guest cave. All right. So you guys uh, head in the direction the two orcs took off, and yeah, the orcs are there. They go, mm, all right. It seems like everything's ready for you. Uh, again, feel free to uh, chill out, relax. Um, if you need any food or anything like that, to you today. Um, besides that, would do you need anything else? We're chilling, bro. Y'all grow any truffle around these parts? <laughs> truffle. Mm, truffle is in, in rare, uh, rare abundance, but we do have some, yes. Would you like to season your fungus with it, or perhaps one of your mac chicken fingers? Hmm, why don't you throw one of those bad boys whole and uh, let me know if, uh, if that could be arranged within the deal, too. Mm, okay. Uh, we will I have a question, Cork. Yes. Um, how do you manage your circadian rhythm underground? You know, they like look at each other. We don't know what sir. sir how do you know when to sleep? When we get tired. Very well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yeah, and they look at you like you're the weird one. Um, yeah, as they I don't leave. know what daylight is. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so they leave you guys to your own uh, faculties and your own desires. What do you all want to do? Do you just want to get to the long rest or anything specific? Yeah, eat, eat and crash is, I think, the plan for me. And I'm... examine examine all the new fucking gear I have since I guess I haven't really got the look. I put it on and then you got the shit kicked out of me, so. Uh, just look at all my stuff. Okay. Repair just, any uh, dents. I'm, I'm, like, thinking out loud as we're all camping together, just being like, is it a cave if we are underground? I mean, it's like Caves. a cave, a cave in a cave, right? Is it still a cave? Yeah, because I think, like, the other place is a cavern, right? Sonny kind of pipes up and goes, I'll talk, I'll talk answer him. I, I need to know. I, I, I am thinking. It's a deep question. Mm. Get it? It's a pun. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, and he kind of gets excited at that. He goes, mm, puns. These are funny. Yes, sir. Oh, man. Uh, Wait. My name is a pun. Yes. Oh. This is already bad. This is already bad. I can't understand any of it. Anyway, yeah, I think it's probably a cave for sure. <laughs> a cave. So any hole in underground is a cave. Well, no, unless it's like a hole. What if it's just a hole in the ground? Just a little dip. It's a cave. No, it doesn't count. It's a hole. So this is not a hole. <laughs> uh, 
knows? <laughs> All right, good night. I uh, just <laughs> roll over. Something to research. The origins of the word cave. They Alexander, they... how do you feel about the whole situation? Uh how Hello. down dang ding. <laughs> <laughs> That Mick Chickum sound real good right now. Yeah. Oh, hey, you got the truffle? Put that in a risotto. <laughs> it's a risotto? Well, I'll be. That's what he says. Oh, there I am. My boot. I tried to answer for you all. That's what Alexander says. Well, I'll be. That's not what they're interested in. Yeehaw. Oh, going to kill us. Yeehaw. Time to draw. That's what he says. As you're all taking your long rest, uh, about two hours or so into it, um, you hear uh, the creeping. Well, actually, is anybody taking watch? Um. Well, okay. Let me ask the situation with the cave. Is mm-hmm. it literally just a fucking cave with no entrance yeah. or exit in the middle of this fucking town? Apparently. Yes. Yeah, I'm. I'm suggesting a watch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, they could just like push a boulder in front, and we're trapped or something. So yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally a lot not. of things. Sure. Let's keep uh, watching. I'm, I'm okay. last on watch. Okay. I'll go first. Okay. And then second. second third. All right. Oh, so third. Third, okay. third, third. So towards the end of your first watch, Soren, um, give me a perception check. Fuck. Alexander's going to watch with meniscus. 19. Sure. 19. Okay. Um, you hear uh, a bunch of footsteps coming your way, probably uh, around four to five people, you imagine. Um, and you can, you can hear them. It's uh, You have dark vision, so you can kind of start seeing uh, people come into existence um, as you look out. Um, there's uh, uh, like one orog and then like four orcs coming your way um, that you have not seen and have not interacted with you up until this point. Um, do you want to do anything as they approach? Are they wielding weapons? No, I mean, they, they have weapons on them, but they're not, like, wielding them actively in their hands or anything. I'll, like, grab my scimitar and, like, poke my head out and be like, Hey, hey, why are you guys making so much noise? Yeah, I am Kronk. He goes up to you. He goes, I'm Kronk. He goes, these are the East Side Orcs, and these are the Bing Bang Twins, okay? <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I knew Big Bang Twins would get Jeremy. Woo. Big Bang Twins, right. my favorite. Oh, sequel. crunk. He goes, he goes, yeah, uh, we were looking to talk to you a little bit. Uh, if we can go into your cave, yeah. Uh, as you can see, I'm a little hard of hearing and loud, so I would like to get deeper in. For sure, yeah. What? Right. I'll, let, <laughs> I'll what? let them all pass me so that I'm behind them. Okay. They go in. Uh, we'd appreciate it if you wake up your friends here because we want the whole King Caboodle to know about this. All right, everybody wake up. Yeah, I just started yelling. Ah, fine acromancer. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Ah. Okay, so wait, here's the deal. You guys, newcomers here, you uh, met the honorable Chief Krusk, I'm sure. Yeah, he's he cool. does not prefer that title. What? He doesn't like what? that title. Chief? He definitely does like that title. Oh. Yeah. oh. Mm-hmm. Well, that was kind of said in sarcasm. Are you not picking up on that? No. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> I got a mute. <laughs> there you go. uh, we all have a proposition here for you. That's uh, good. This uh, Krusk fella. He's uh, a little obsessed with uh, this item he found that uh, gives him basically uh, it lets him find veins of rubies and he oh. is not really concerned with the village's well-being anymore and we are looking to usurp him. So I was wondering if y'all were interested in uh, participating in this. How? Huh? What? Uh, okay. uh, <laughs> Okay. What, what do we get in this coup d'etat? I don't think that's the right word for that. Um. Anyway, uh, basically, you would get whatever he promised. I'm sure he promised a bunch of bullshit, passage information, some gems. He's not going to deliver any of that. He's a traitor and he's a liar. Can I Plus, answer? on the other hand, 
Alexander's gonna insight. I will also insight. Because he would. Okay. I, I will one. not. I believe it. 16. Sorry, Elder. 16. And Alexander's wasn't worth saying, or what? I rolled a one. Oh, you rolled a one. Okay. For him, yeah. So with the 16, um, you can see there's definitely uh, some beef between this guy and Cross, obviously, right? Yeah. Um, but from what he's, uh, like, where he's coming from, he definitely seems, like, sincere about being lied to and uh, kind of being betrayed in the past. So you don't know if it's, like, a personal issue between them that's led to this, and or if it's kind of Cross's nature. Is that still a little bit... Hard to figure out, but you definitely believe that this guy has at least betrayed or done some lying in the past that has hurt Mr. Crunk here. Okay. What was the main guy's name again? Crunk, um, Crunk and Krusk. Crunk. That's okay. Yes, Crunk, of course. I would be like, hey, uh, is there like, why is Crunk and Krusk, are you guys like related? Look, I don't want to call him my older brother because that is some bullshit and fuck that, okay? But yes, we are related. So you want to use what? <laughs> you want to use huh? their, your older your older brother? You want power from him because he's lied to you in the past. Is that is that what we're getting at here? Precisely, and in general, ever since he found this item from that deep gnome that he stole it from, he's just been obsessed. Wait, so the whole reason we have to go kill this deep gnome is because Cross stole an item from him in the first place? Mm, precisely. This deep gnome, he has had quite the vengeance on the village, and Cross doesn't care how many orcs die in the process. He just wants to get more and more rubies and more and more gems for himself. Is there anything uh, special about these rubies, or is it just, you know, materialism? Well... Yeah, I, from what our information has gathered, that you all are looking for Mantle Dareth, right? Yeah, for sure. Well, they fetch a pretty penny there, being the main merchant outpost in the Underdark. He is gathering them. I don't really know what he's plotting with the money he can amass, but I doubt it's anything good for us. Have you asked him what uh, this money is for in open dialogue with your government? Mm, he's not my government, he's my big brother, and he's an asshole. But I've asked him, and he doesn't want to tell me. He says, oh, little brother, leave it to the grown-ups. Just because I like crunk music. Me too. <laughs> uh, what, well, all right. All right, all right. What? We can think about this. We can think about it. Is there, like, a place we can chat with you guys away from everybody else? Mm. Well, you have been assigned to go to this barrel stock forest, right? Yeah. Uh, we could lead you partly of the way there if you want that. Um, there's also, uh, they probably didn't tell you this because they are all assholes in the little government building that you put it to talk. But uh, there's a very high ledge that you're going to have to traverse that is about only 18 inches wide, uh, about a foot and a half. Um, so it's uh, quite the dangerous uh, trek considering that in that 18 and a half foot ledge the fall is about 70 feet so uh we can uh, help you out maybe bring a rope or two and give you guys that and then we could talk on the way there yeah for sure bro that'd be great <clears throat> also i'd be upfront with you now this deep gnome does need to be taken care of in some way or shape or form whether that's getting his item back and letting him leave alone or if you can convince him in general to leave us orc society alone that would be great because he is going to keep picking us off one by one until he gets crossed himself. <clears throat> Wouldn't uh, your coup solve the deep nun's issue and he would leave? Mm, hopefully. But what? I fear that if he is not the one that is crushed down by his own hands, he might not find the revenge satisfying enough. The deep gnomes are a vicious race. Um... Do the deep gnomes run Mantle Dareth? Mm, they have an enclave there. A lot of the races down here do. It's kind of a whole outpost where the different enclaves kind of get together. There is a Snuffiblin enclave, a Drow enclave, as well as a uh, kind of mm, kind of an orc one, but not really. Um, the, the main two ones are the, the Drow and the Snuffiblin. Oh, um, excuse me, and the Duragar. The Duragar enclave is there as well. 
All right, so let me be... go ahead, Soren. I was gonna say, so let me just get this out of the way now. Do you you want to work with us? You want us to help you? Do you uh, say that everything you're telling us is the truth? Yes. All right. Yeah. Stand still for a second there, then, pal. I cast Zone of Truth. Dull. On him. Yeah. Okay. You gotta make yeah. a saving throw, right? Yes. Am I in this radius? Maybe. Let Excuse me look. Me, oh, let me whisper in your ear. <laughs> He's about to tell you something that he likes to hear. Yeah. Uh, uh, what's the saving throw? It's a char Charisma 15. Charisma 15? He yeah. failed. Okay, and I know whether he fails or succeeds. So, like, a blue circle of, like, blue flames, like, fly up and then, like, go down really low. And it's a 15-foot radius sphere. Okay. Is it him and his, and his groupies stuck in that circle? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. All right, I'll step into it also. I'll be like, hey, bro, while you're standing in this thing, you can't tell a lie. Is everything you told us the truth? Yes. And you're really willing to work with us if we help deal with your brother here and he's a piece of shit who doesn't care about the other orcs. Yes. Yeah, bros, it seems pretty we, good to me. We're not looking for betrayal or anything like that. We are looking to better this society and usurp our uncapable leader. Um, could you perform a task that would make it easier for all parties involved? The task yes. being get Krusk to where the Snurfiblin is so the Snurfiblin can kill him and leave. That would solve all your issues, correct? Mm, precisely, but he's a fucking coward and he doesn't want to leave. You're going to have to show him some proof that the Snurfiblin has been mm, rather detained or taken care of in some way before he'll leave this cave. Could you provide us with rubies? Mm, with rubies... He's hoarded many, but I could perhaps get some hands on them. We could bring him back alive and then just, like, let him go crazy when he gets here. The thing is, yes, that's true as well. The thing with the rubies is, he's not really tempted by them because he has the device that lets him find the veins themselves. He's overflowing with rubies at this point. All right. We'll figure it out. All right, bro. I got an, I got an idea. <laughs> I got a rock. We can, uh, <laughs> we can meet up with this fella. Uh, try to make sure he's not hostile towards us, and I could maybe like you know you could tie me up, and I'll transform into him. Be like, hey, we we got him. <laughs> oh, you you can do that. He has magic we that lets him change shape. Yeah, it's like a spell he can cast. You know, that sounds like I a got cool idea. I got spells. <laughs> I got spells. <laughs> yeah, bro, Ooh. he's great. All right, for sure. I've heard that tune before. Yeah. And that, as you kind of start talking to him a little bit, Dollar Brock, and your attention gets shifted, um, you will see one of the Bing Bang twins just whispering in the ear of Wodan. And Wodan just... <laughs> All you hear is... <laughs> <laughs> um, I just... I regard the entire party that Krunk is with. I just say, are any of you planning to betray Krunk? No. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I guess it sounds like a plan. We'll catch you guys in the morning. Okay. And uh, they all take off. All right. Well, bros. We should have we should have hired those two for the for the talent show. You know, we probably should have. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, it'd be late. a good rap sec. <laughs> they were not singing at They're all. They're good for like two songs, words. bro. Two songs. Well, it's still music. <laughs> hey, they told the truth, so I think maybe this doesn't seem like a bad play, eh? Uh, well, this town is pretty shit. Uh, sorry, this town is pretty bad. Uh, in regards to uh. Oh yeah, talk doesn't curse. In regards to the socioeconomic strata, so uh, maybe these rubies would be used. He might be using them to purchase something to help, and he just doesn't have enough. And this brother is gilded from a personal dispute. Yeah, for it sure. Seems complicated, but I think the solution of having the deep known gain his vengeance on Krask seems elegant. 
yeah, it seems like if we talk to the Deep Gnome, then we can sort out what's the truth and what's not the truth. I think we should definitely try to avoid killing the Deep Gnome by any means necessary. We don't know what kind of ties he has to this whole place. Yeah, it's against yes. my better nature, but I agree. I believe the Deep Gnomes as a race slash society maybe have more pull in where we are going than the orcs. Yeah. All right. Let's rest on it and hit it in the morning. I'm going to sleep. Or I guess I'll finish my watch first. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, you finish up your watch, you guys. Take uh, the rest of your watches mm -hmm. unimpeded. Nobody comes around and talks to you guys anymore. There's no uh, specific dangers. You do hear the rumbling of uh, the the caverns around you throughout the night. Things shifting in the rock itself. Uh, maybe the rock itself shifting. Uh, different sounds that you haven't really heard on the surface before. But besides that, there's nothing that comes to your attention. Do I, um, during my watch, do I hear crickets? Do you hear crickets during your watch? I would say yeah, definitely. Uh, I'm applying my insect repellent. <laughs> okay. One yeah. out of 100 applications done. <laughs> the, the first sign <laughs> of crickets, you just lather yourself in insect repellent. Make sure mm -hmm. that they don't come anywhere near you. Very well done. Um, actually, and while you're you're kind of doing that, a talk. Give me a perception check. <laughs> Giant killer crickets. Um, I think it went up. Yeah, yeah. So sixteen. Sixteen. Um. Uh. You notice on like some of the uh, higher ends of the cavern, and the it's kind of like dripping down a little bit too. There's like um like a, a, a mucus on some of the walls here. And you kind of get, a, as you get closer to it, you kind of sniff it, and it smells pretty awful. Um, give me a nature check. <clears throat> uh, Eleven. Eleven? It, it, it seems to be some type of mucus that, it, given the smell and kind of what you know about, like, nature and how things work, um, it seems like it's something to keep uh, a creature away. You can't really make out the details of anything right now, whether it's like, uh, like, yeah, what the creature is specifically that it's keeping away, and you don't really know what the mucus itself is from. But yeah, the, just the fact, the smell and the feeling you get, it's definitely here coded to make sure that nothing fucking just comes through this entrance that shouldn't be here. It's the application. It's the same application as my insect repellent. Right? Like yes, and that's things. kind of yeah why you kind of put those pieces together. You just don't know the details of what the creature is. How how much mucus? Like a lot. Yeah, yeah. In certain areas of the of the caves and whatnot, there is a good amount of coating of this mucus. I had some ideas, but yeah, yeah. Okay, so yeah, and you guys can take your long rest and you can click your sheets and whatnot. Everything goes huh. according to sleep plan. Yeah, yeah. I got a long rest, elder. Yeah. Fucking Big oh, Bang Twins. Keep it that. that. Hey, Elder, <laughs> long rest. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so the next day, you guys are greeted by those two orcs um, that led you all here in the first place. And they go, okay, we will uh, lead you into the direction of the Barrel Stock <laughs> Forest. It's going to be about an hour or two trek, depending on how fast you want to get going. Um, and we'll point you in the direction, give you a couple of turns and twists and whatnot, and good luck. All right, for sure, Broham. Um, yeah, I'll start. It. I'll lead up the front and start heading that direction. Okay. And uh, let me see here. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really doing anything. I don't think this morning. Okay. Um, as you guys uh, go, you start traversing in this direction about 15 or 20 minutes into this direction um popping out of the shadows of the cavern are the uh our crunk the east side orcs and the bing bang twins um and they all meet you up again <laughs> what a, what a posse. <laughs> they meet you guys up um, oh I'm glad you all can make it and he kind of uh you see crunk takes out a couple of ropes a rope for each of you and he goes, mm, yeah, please take this because the high ledge is no joke. Uh, but yes, yeah, so let's uh, continue our way and uh, discuss what you want to discuss. Good old Bing Bang twins. Mm -hmm. uh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I'll head. I'll follow him. Yes. Yeah, so 
The Snafiblin is most likely kept up in the barrel stock forest somewhere. Now, the barrel stock forest, obviously, where we get a lot of our barrel stocks from, and our society is running a little bit short on the barrel stocks at the moment because nobody really wants to go with this Snafiblin, who is basically Rambo, is just sitting there and waiting for it to come. So, because of that, we are not really wanting to go, and he has a lot of traps laid everywhere and pretty much fires at the first sign of an orc or an orog. So, uh, yes. Who's Rambo? Rambo. Oh, well, you have not seen that play. There's oh, like so, right, right. The play. Got, got it. Bro, there's it like seven the Rambo down. plays, right? You must have seen at least one of them. Yes. I've, I've only seen the Rocky ones. It has the same actor, right? Yeah, he's oh, yeah. in a lot of them. Okay, <laughs> got it. I like him. <laughs> he's a good orc. It's happening. <laughs> what you you have to, you're unfamiliar with the Rambo? I am unfamiliar with the word play in this context. What? You haven't seen Mel Fester Malone? He's been he's been crushing it since I was a kid, bro. He's great. He's Some the reason why I got man. into this business. No, no, not at all. No. Whoa. Oh man. <laughs> Seems like you got quite the backlog there, Mr. Man. For sure, bro. <laughs> I'm a lizard. For sure, Mr. Lizard Brad. <laughs> <laughs> what are all your names anyway? We are the you know our names. So uh, I'm a talk, mother's disciple, mother is the greatest god ever to live. She's a son. It's probably this better is, than groom she is. I'll give you that one. This <laughs> is my son, Sonny. Sonny like it does a bow bow. All right, well, the rest of you don't want to tell us. Hey, I'm Soren. That's Alex. Yeehaw, I'm Alexander. Uh, that's Meniscus <laughs> over there. That's Dollar Braca. Uh, that's Wodan. He's also. I go by 40 now. <laughs> you go down by what? I go by 40 now. Oh, hey, what up, Bordy? Mm. I okay. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, I'm Wodan. Um, I introduced Brodan. Oh, thank you. He goes, thank you for introducing me, Soren. I don't really want to talk to these guys, especially Boy, those man. points of the Big Bang. Stop what? talking that okay. much. <laughs> That's a little rude. You don't want to talk to them? I'll, I'll like lean in. Like you got two kids. Time, I'll lean in <laughs> to, to Wodan, and I'll be like, hey, Brodan, what did those Big Bang twins whisper in your ear? One sentence. And he told me, wait till, the, wait till I see there. I don't want to finish the sentence. Oh. <laughs> oh, he's here in the background. I just look at the Bing Bang twins. I'm like, that's not a first. In you don't say that on our first introduction, right? Chill. <laughs> they seem to only talk in whispers and in hands. Yeah, um, for sure. Sounded like a flamingo. Limited dialect, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, oh. the. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've lost my train of thought now. Um, <laughs> uh, Crunk, I was, uh, all right, well, do you need any more information? Uh, you said he only attacks orcs, right? So we're probably pretty cool to just stroll up in there. Uh, yes, I would mainly look out for the booby traps in this case. He probably won't come flying from the trees like he does to the orcs, but he will have a lot of booby traps laid everywhere. What's his, <clears> hey, <throat> what's his name? Well, that, I d actually don't know. Okay, we'll just yell for him for sure. What? What kind of traps are there? So we could look out for them. Mm, he has done a great job. I, I believe he might have some druidic capabilities because he has like spore fungi everywhere. It's very hard to get through without getting a, just a cloud of spores in your face. Sounds like a problem. Okay. Um, but he also has like, you know, like the, like basically net traps made of vines. It's a real whole fucked up situation. All right, well, uh, yeah, let's get climbing. All right, uh, best of luck to all you. Um, yes, okay. So as you guys, uh, is they, they kind of leave you guys. You do come to this uh, ledge that you were told about beforehand. And yeah, it's uh, basically, you've been uh, steadily at an incline for a little bit here. Um, and you eventually come to a spot where this ledge is, yeah, like I said, like 18 inches wide, very, very thin ledge. And below it is just like straight darkness. 
Um, you could see in your dark vision, Soren, and whoever. In meniscus, your dark vision is a little less than Soren's. It's 30 feet compared to 60. So you see, like, a little bit, but it goes pretty dark down there. Um, Soren, you also see, like, the, the 60 feet down. But it looks like it goes a bit beyond even that dark vision as well in terms of the drop. Okay. Um, but uh, how do you guys want to uh, traverse this ledge here? You want to tie the ropes to each other? Just have them fucking whatever you want to do. Let me know. Yeah, I think well, Sunny can fly, right? Have we seen? Yes, fly? Sunny can fly. Okay. Um, I would say meniscus goes first with the rope, so he can get on the other side and haul anyone up in case people fall down. Or okay. meniscus and him and I are the strongest. I don't know if we should cross all together because then you know if we fall it's bad. But if we cross once, set up the rope. Can we throw yeah. Wodan on Meniscus' shoulders? Well, I oh, think my say throw him down. My <laughs> my <laughs> opinion sure. is like maybe maybe Meniscus <laughs> and I, with the aid of the dragon, should yeah establish an anchor like a rope anchor yeah. and then help ferry people across. Yeah, you guys can do that for sure. All right, so I'm gonna ask a talk about hey bro, can you uh, put light on Sunny so he can like be a moving torch with us? He is already quite sunny yeah make him lighter brighter even more mm -hmm. i could cast dancing light on him to travel uh, that'd be great this too. one's saying that you're not bright enough even though i think you're as bright as god allows you to be which is a perfect amount but i will cast a spell on you that's positive reinforcement right there uh oh. i uh yeah i'll cast light on my just a on my slanderously skin. lying all right slanderous <laughs> Did you you put a you put a necklace on him before, right? He has one, yeah. I, he kind yeah. of demanded it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he brought it out, so you want to cast light on that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's good. And so it's like an object, kind of. Um, so you cast a light on Sonny's little gold chain that he's got, and he uh, is like, okay. He's like, oh, and wh what do you want me to do? Uh, just provide uh, these two with some vision, if you can. Okay. And he starts uh, taking off, flapping his wings, and kind of like floating over the ledge here. Should I cast, like, Dancing Light for each of us? I can only cast up to, like, four. Yeah, uh, just make them, like, like a line. Straight up. Yeah. Right? yeah. Like a diagonal <laughs> line. How, how... All right, I, got this, I got four of them. Let me see those hands. Let me see those hands. Let me see those hands. Let me see them. And then fucking four torches come up for each each verse uh, that came out. For... How, how, what's the, like, slope like? Is it, like, a straight slope from this like pit or like can we reach to the edge of the whatever it is the chasm the chasm um you can what do you mean by reach it like because there's a giant hole right and then we are in front of a wall basically yeah so basically what, what would happen is you would come up on like a regular cavernous road right like a cavernous ground yeah and then eventually that would kind of just drop off into like a pit yeah that's down like, beyond 60 feet but to traverse this pit to get to the other side, there's a very small ledge here okay. that you can cross without falling. Is the ledge up against the wall, or is it yes. a bridge of chasm? Okay, okay. Yeah, it, yeah, it's not like a full chasm where it's like on both sides you're just gonna fall. It's one side and then a wall to your back. The misty mountains. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Then, I think yeah, meniscus and I should try to tow a line up there to help everybody else. Okay, yeah. so if you guys are going to establish going first and try to help everybody else, give me dexterity saving throws. Alexander, <clears throat> and I guess me, are going to be uh, looking out across the ledge to make sure nothing's greeting them. Okay, right, give me a perception check. Both of you, obviously. Dexterity saving. I got uh, 18 for dexterity saving. Oh Dude, it's fucking cocked, but it was such a good roll. Okay. Oh my god. My Not great. 10. Right Ooh, 10 is the DC. Okay. Uh, and 18 uh, for a meniscus. So you both, you know, with your backs to the ledge, kind of scooting on. And meniscus, this is, it's requiring, like, the most dexterous thing you've probably done up until this point, at least to your memory, because you are a big fella. You know what I'm saying? You're like mm -hmm. an eight foot tall minotaur. It's not easy. You got hooves for feet. It is not an easy thing to get across this ledge, but you managed to. <laughs> 
be dexterous enough to to traverse it. So are a little bit easier for you, a little bit unwieldy because of the new plate armor. You're still figuring out the balance of like a delicate situation like this. But with a with a few stumbles, nothing detrimental to your health or anything. You manage to get across. And you guys can establish the rope anchor for the rest of the uh, crew to make their saves with advantage. Did you want to say something at all? I got ten and eleven. And ten and eleven. Alexander okay. Got eleven. So. Okay, so as you take looks uh, across the ceiling, the pit, anything like that, you don't seem to see any creatures or uh, the like. There's not much fungi life here either. Um, and this is probably like less fungi life that you've seen before. It is very dark in this scenario, so it's good that you guys all lit up with dancing lights and the light of this necklace, so everybody can see relatively easily. And yeah, even with the light, it doesn't reveal any creatures, just more cavernous walls. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm moving and grooving. I'll, I'll head back too to try to help everybody like along. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Give me uh, give me a dexterity saving throw with advantage as you go back. Oh shit. Okay. Uh, nineteen. Okay. All right. So as uh, Soren goes back and is going to start ferrying people along, who wants to go first? Let's let Wodan go first. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. Wait. Can I make a suggestion? Uh, do we have any rope left at all? Yes. Or did we use it all? Okay, can we, like, just in case, maybe tie a rope to, like, each person going across? And, like, maybe me and Soren could, or I guess Soren's on the other side now, but I mm -hmm. could just, like, hold on to the rope just in case if they make a slip or anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah you guys yeah. can uh, establish these uh, circumstances here to help save anybody that might tumble. Um, and Wodan will make the saving throw with advantage here. Okay, barely makes it. <laughs> Got his hand. Um, just barely. So he does get across. I'll just like he put him on my shoulders. Just, He'll just like be <laughs> on my back and I'll just go regularly, basically. <laughs> uh, you give me a dexterity saving throw with advantage, too. Okay. I figured he needs the help. Uh, 12. Okay, so yeah, you may you guys make it across, and he's like, yeah, very tightly like wrapping himself around your like shoulders and neck, and like <laughs> you get you kind of choked a little bit by him just because he's like holding on super tight and trying to make sure he doesn't fall. And as you get to the other side, he like collapses on the ground, like hyperventilating. <sighs> right. I'm being a bitch over there. <laughs> who's who's next? Uh, as I see, like it's. It's someone like struggling to get across. So I mean, you you see that? He, uh, give me an insight check. <laughs> you almost killed um, me. Oh, that's Alexander. It, it is um, fifteen. 15. So you see that any type of struggles that are coming from it is basically just him getting used to the new plate armor um, for the most part. And I mean, Wodan was also kind of choking him a little bit. So he's not having like the smooth this time, but he doesn't seem to be struggling. Nice. Um, and then, yeah, who's next? And if you're going to go back, I need a dexterity saving throw with advantage every time. So if you're going to go back. Jesus. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what I'm saying. You don't have to for us. Yeah, yeah I guess Wodan was like. Well, oh, you might need it for me, but oh, so Jesus. basically, what I would say, basically, Soren, you going back because they already have advantage because of the anchor you guys set up. Yeah. Basically, if somebody does fall, you would get the opportunity to catch them. That's basically what you're providing by doing this. So yeah, just from a mechanical standpoint. Do I want to try to say? Yeah, I'll try to. I'll go back for Jeremy. This will be the last one. Okay. All right. <laughs> I have plus four decks, dude. I'm just saying. I have. Yeah, I but have you have minus two, two to saving throws. Wait, uh, fourteen. Four so long. 14? Okay. So you and me get back to the other side to start uh, escorting Dollar Braca across. So both of you give me dexterity saving throws with advantage again. Okay. Dollar Braca and Soren. Ooh. 22. Four. Okay. I kick so off, Soren. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you. Like, like, you over. Again, you're a changeling. You're very dexterous in general, right? So you're all like, all right, I'm big chilling. You make it across, no problem. Um, and you remember to minus two all your saving throws, by the way. I did. I did, yeah. So that's, it's still 22. Okay. So you uh, are getting across. Now, Soren is in front of you. So as you get towards the end here, Soren, like you can see now a little bit unwieldy, actually does slip on a kind of a little pebble of a rock and loses his plate mail balance. Um, do you could try to catch him. Um, but again, he weighs a shit ton because not only, I mean, normally he's a half elf 
and he's pretty live for half elf as well like he's not built strength wise he's built dexterous wise but this plate armor is very very heavy like so i've prepared myself stuff. for this day with a whole strength of eight yeah so <laughs> give me a, a strength saving throw to try to save soren <laughs> no i don't think he's gonna try to save me i think he's just gonna let oh. me figure it out i don't i don't think because if he takes me with him i'm pretty much dead and yeah. i'm minus three i'll, I'll be okay. fine Okay, so you draw. Okay, so go. What? I'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Right, wait, 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 wait. Make a decision. Make I pull out my microphone and cast uh, levitate on him. Hold on. Okay, that's a good decision here. I just gotta double check something real quick. Quick trigger. <laughs> yeah. Right. Instead of grabbing him, I immediately reach into my pocket for the mic <laughs> and I yell, "And I'm free." <laughs> I, I had a way to save myself too. Oh, this is better. Be <laughs> okay. So yeah, I will say okay. So it, because it's an action, not a reaction, he does fall part of the ways. He falls about halfway down, and you have dark vision or no? It doesn't I matter have, because there's light anyway, yeah, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so you cast levitate. So sword as you you see the ground now because your dark vision is sixty feet and you're thirty feet down. So you see the ground you're about to crash into, and as you do, you just stop midair and pause, and you uh, begin to float back up. Okay. Um, and you begin to float back up though. Let's see here. Uh oh. Let's see. Um, I had a plan in case he didn't do something. So. Okay. But uh, luckily he did do something. Oh. Um, and then here. Okay, um, you notice uh, as you're kind of floating back up, uh, something from the ceiling that looked like a regular stalactite falls, and it comes like at your head, but you manage to like just dodge out of the way at the last second. And this little weird, like it's kind of like a bigger worm with like these these teeth that are sticking out like mandibles comes and falls at like lightning speed towards you and you can see you manage to dodge it and it, like burrows into the ground with how much force it falls from the ceiling um and as you kind of look up you see now that there is a lot of these things on the ceiling um but they're kind of spread out they're not directly above you they are directly above this pit though and they seem to be waiting for people to drop into the pit um, uh, but you did not take damage or anything like that. Okay. I, like, dodge out of the way of it, and I'm like, okay, hey, bros, don't go near the pit. There's uh, there's some creatures on the ceiling. I didn't realize. All good. All part of the plan. I just, like, slowly float up. <laughs> and then whenever I get to, like, the height of the wall again, I guess I'll reattach. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you basically, got... you're basically in space now. Yeah. There's, like, zero gravity, essentially. Yeah, and and uh, you, yeah, you you're kind of floating, and you can only really float up and and down. So Sunny kind of like brings his like uh, nose, his snout, and kind of like pushes you back towards the wall. Yeah, um, and takes you onto the to the wall proper, and you kind of get down. Um, you guys make it to the other side, and then we only have uh, a talk left on uh, and Alexander actually. And Alexander, yeah. yeah. Um, I'll let Alexander go first. Okay. Um, you know, and it's just a saving throw. Yeah, dexterity saving throw. Okay. With advantage. Mm -hmm. I rolled a one and a two on that saving throw, by the way. I rolled so bad. A four and a five. But we have plus eight, so uh, yeah, you guys it's are good. Uh, 13. 13, okay. So yeah, um, again, you know, being a dexterous individual, Alexander has a few slip-ups, but he's able to get his feet under him before taking a tumble into this pit itself. Um, and yeah, he manages to get to the other side, no problem. More slippery than a chicken coop. <laughs> I, I tell you what. <laughs> I hope Elder's back next week. Too. <laughs> I tell you uh, what, it's mostly yeehaw. I, <laughs> I'll go across now that I've uh, seen everyone. He's pulling across. every card as revenge on you guys. That's, that's, fine. Know that. oh, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. One of these here cards. Oh boy! I dropped thirteen. A natural twenty, so twenty-eight. Okay, so yeah, I mean, you would definitely. I just walk. Yeah, <laughs> the easiest time. Uh, getting across no worries about ever falling or anything like that you guys make it to the other side safely um and this was about 45 minutes into this journey as well okay so you from what you've been told you probably have anywhere between 15 minutes to another hour 
uh, to go. It depends really on how much you're traveling. But at this pace, it's probably closer to 15 minutes than an hour. Okay. So you guys uh, get to the other side. You good. I've traversed the ledge successfully. Avoided the piercers that are on the ceiling as well, waiting for unsuspecting creatures to uh, drop into the pit and um, for them to take advantage of you. Alexander's going to be looking at the ceiling from now on as well to make sure there's no more piercers. Very in character move for can sure. I, can I so, scan a piercer with the monster decks too? Uh, yeah, you can. It's a hundred, sure. 120 foot range, I think. Yeah, yeah, you can. Okay. So a piercer, as you uh kind of scan it a bit, it's a monstrosity. It's a, but it's a medium creature. So like this, is a, when I say a worm, it is like a three to four foot worm. Like it's mm -hmm. it's definitely mad weird. It's got a single eyeball on the front of its face with like a slit uh pupil, and yeah, it's got like four mandibles and a a, a mouth that opens up into more teeth. And they basically uh remain while they remain motionless on the ceiling. It's very hard to distinguish them from a stag tide or anything like that. But what you do know is that they are very 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 slow. Um, that's the, the main thing you glean for this is that like they can only move five feet and they can only climb five feet at turn So like if you manage to get out of range of these piercers, they're not really much of a threat They're okay. ones that just kind of lie in wait and try to do big damage when they fall from the ceiling. Gotcha uh, Yeah, I'll just tell everybody that but like bro hams those things seem like they're like pretty slow But if they catch you unawares, I mean they came right from my head. You gotta be careful Yes, that does seem to be there Hi, I can't. You're way in the back. I can't hear you. Modus operandi. For sure. Good old modern operation. All right, let's get in there. <laughs> and I think on that modern operation is where we're going to take our quick break. Yeehaw. I character. I didn't get that. <laughs> Whoosh. What when they do. Said, when they both said it, it just went right over my head. I'm just shaking. I'm just like, I have yeah. no idea what the fuck these guys are talking about. Yeah. Worm with teeth. It's you know how I imagined it, you know, like in Half Life. I thought it was one of those things. Oh, Half Life little... Two, the things. But this one, it just gets longer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my plan was to misty step if I missed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that was what I was going to do because I always have it. But then he whipped out the mic. I was like, oh yeah, all right, dude. I can't believe I rolled a one and a two on the last one. Every other one, my rolls were so good. Damn. <laughs> I definitely rolled a two and a twenty. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> oh, nice, nice. I would have definitely died. I should have dandy stabbed. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, we're on, are we on break? Taking a break. Right. Yeah, we're on break. They can still hear What's everybody. Up, chat? Anyway, you guys ready to come back? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've talked to a yeah. lot of people that want to play for the first time. So, definitely an avenue we can keep open in the future. But we are back into Magic Pixel. You guys have a successfully traversed the high ledge and are making your way to the Barrel Stock Forest. In servitude of Krusk or Krunk, we haven't really decided just yet, I guess. Um, <laughs> keeping your options open as the, the smart part of you are. Um, you do eventually, after about another 20 or so minutes, um, get to the kind of um, opening of another cavern that definitely, from what you can tell, is a force. There's a lot of big mushrooms here. There's also a, kind of a signaling you <clears throat> that you're in the right place in the first place are these barrel stocks. That you uh, purchased before Soren, so you easily recognize them as the exact barrel stocks that they're talking about here. But in this vicinity, in general, are a whole lot of orange, yellow mushrooms that are, are like super tall, like legit. Like some are like up to 15 feet tall. Um, so like it is uh, quite the overgrown fungi type forest here. Um, and you do know that uh, this place is filled with traps and whatnot. So how do you guys want to traverse this place? So Soren, this is like your homeland, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, a little bit. There's like some pretty large plants and stuff for sure, but I'm not familiar with this exact kind of fauna. It's a little different in the Feywild. Uh, maybe I should like help point out uh, what kind of plants are going on to like Alexander, since he's like pretty, pretty good at finding this kind of stuff, and we should just be careful while we're traversing. Um, yeah, I think we should have someone spot from me essentially either alexander or you yeah okay i can do it to give you advantage okay. or just just to keep an eye on me as i skulk yeah i'll spot for you i will go out and disable every trap i start breaking to a sprint no um <laughs> <laughs> i start whacking all the trees and yeah just... um <laughs> I'll, I'll i'll go slow at first um and try and actually kind of pick out 
you know, trouble areas and try and guide everyone. And mm -hmm. I'm just trying to see the types of traps at first, I guess. All right, give me a perception check. And then um, I'm letting Soren call out to me, I guess. We're not stealthing yeah. or anything. Me, me and uh, Alexander will try to keep an eye out for you, help you. My perception is uh, 22. 22, very nice. All right, so as you uh, traverse through the beginnings of this uh, barrel stock forest, you notice uh, specifically there is a cluster in a lot of areas, and they're, they're kind of well hidden behind other mushrooms and other plant life. Are these two foot tall, like toadstools with orange and red stripes across like a beige cap? And you definitely recognize those as uh, trouble. Like you can see a, uh, a bit of poisonous spores just kind of like acting as an aura around them once you move past the regular fungi that's hiding it and uh, masking it. Um, so because of that, you manage to avoid a lot of those. There's also um, in kind of like there's there's a lot of vine traps as well like nets that will like come up and tie you up but in those vines itself there's also like a little bit of one foot tall mushrooms um that seem to have like a cap that uh, it, it's hard to tell but it looks like uh, like it's what's the word i'm looking for it's kind of unstable uh -huh. like the caps itself they, they they kind of like vibrate a little bit and give off some type of combustible element that you uh, gotcha. that's what you get at uh and like yeah that's kind of what you gather from those um you as far as other traps go you don't really see much it's mainly those two types of traps with this uh, orange and red striped mushroom as well as this uh torch stock that, that it's called that has like the uh, combustible element to it um okay cool and so we're, we're traversing through the this set of traps correct mm -hmm. and we're able to get past them i don't have to do anything in regards to getting my party through it yeah with your perception check with your successful scouting as long as everybody just wants to follow a talk's lead you guys can avoid the traps and pretty much follow along the path that he's leading yeah okay yeah um, i'm great with that yeah sure. please do not touch things what are they shiny? You, you rolled a 22 for your perception right yeah Okay, so as you kind of get towards uh, probably about like 80 or so feet into this forest itself, you see hiding in one of the like taller mushroom caps, this uh, small deep gnome, uh, like dark blue skin, and he is just like ripped to shreds. He's got a red bandana on, he's got a knife in his mouth, and he's got this weird like mushroom gun looking thing that like you could tell it's, gonna, it's a dangerous weapon. And he's just like scouting you guys. Um... I say an undercommon. Um, I'm walking like this. Snurfiblin, we wish to speak with you. And he kind of pops up. He takes the blade out of his mouth. He goes, say what you will. Um, do you desire vengeance against the chieftain of the orcs? Of course I do. Will killing the chieftain sate that vengeance? <laughs> if you can get him to me alive and I can do the killing, yes. Would you mind killing him here or there? Mm, I would like as little allies with him as possible. So here would be easier, but if we can infiltrate and you can successfully guarantee me a 1v1 or a chance to kill him fairly, then we will do that as well. Uh, really quickly, uh, did we get a sense of how big the coup is? Like, is it like half the village versus the other half, or? Oh no, it's like got four dudes. Yeah, it's like the just five. Four, just five. literally those those dudes. Yeah. Okay. So All like, right. in the conversation that you had, it's basically like what their idea was in terms of getting this Nerfibl in his revenge. They would uh, try to lure Krusk out from this village. And then, but again, the, the problem is that he doesn't want to leave, right? He has no reason to leave. He doesn't want to leave. And he knows how dangerous this Nerfiblin is. So he wants some type of, what Krunk told you was that you're going to need some type of proof or some type of like plan to lure Krusk out. So like, if you want to bring back like a finger, he probably would tell you this. That it's like, you can bring back a finger or something like that. Something that would prove that he had been captured and has been kind of um, restrained. So to speak. Um, 
I'll, I'll yeah. still wouldn't be. He still wouldn't be averse to maybe an assassination attempt per se. Well, what I was gonna say is like we could bring you back like captured, and then you know when he comes to check on you outside the village, you handle it there. Mm. If you uh, can get him outside the village, then by all means, we could do that. Especially since getting back there will allow me to be in proximity of my invention that I want back as well. Uh, I'm going to ask him about that in Undercon. Uh, mm -hmm. um, of course. <clears throat> why, why did he steal this from you? Mm -hmm. He, well, I came across these orcs in the first place trying to get back to Mantal Dareth because I spent some time on the surface. Uh, and give me, uh, give me insight checks. I don't uh, speak under Alexander common. Will. Oh, can yeah. I... oh, yeah, we wouldn't understand. Does he, did he speak back to us in common? No, he's responding in whatever language is being spoken to. Okay, okay, so the first time he spoke back in common. Uh, my insight was a 10. Um, Alexander knows no mesh, but that's not under common. Yeah. No. Yeah, I could only I insight to check him if he's speaking in common. All right. True. Yeah. Uh, he he seems to spend some time on the some time on the surface. You don't really gather where or what he was doing, but he uh, kind of elaborates a little bit on the subject. He goes, mm, "I spent some time on the surface to aid my Snurfiblin brethren and sisters down here. We um, fancy rubies very much, and I was able to invent something that uh, basically is able to suss out the veins of different type of gems here in the deep cavernous rocks of the Underdark and the Orc." Uh, he told me I'd be able to get to Mantle Dareth. He would be able to bring me back there, but he betrayed me and took my item. And now he's taking all the rubies for himself. I see. So Does a talk break vengeance. this down to us? <laughs> your vengeance is just. Uh, I'll then I'll, I'll talk to the group. Um, I, I'll be honest, bro. It sounds like to me he is basically. Didn't he offer us something similar? He's like, I can help you guys get to Mantal Dare. Like, how do we know he's not going to do something to us? The orc? Yeah. Yes. Um, it is, these are two bad accounts of this particular individual, so I'm inclined to believe our Snurfiblin friend, as we are a friend of the Snurfiblins. Maybe we could also talk to... Uh... Uh, the east side orcs and, and the Ping Bang twins as well. Maybe we could get like some sort of union going. It's it's more like it's like not a, quite a union. I just want to kill the guy. <laughs> it's a little different. Yeah, it's it's like that's, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. The the political structure of the the town afterwards is up to the Crunk and the Bing Bang twins. You forgot the east side orcs. orcs. The east side, side orcs. orcs. My apologies. Uh, it's like a tribe called Quest. Orcs. You gotta say the whole thing. It's, it's your uh, typical West Coast lizard bias, bro. I've got no problems. It's just how it goes. <laughs> Once they implement ranked choice voting into the society, uh, maybe they'll have a better time. But that is for them to decide. That is their people. That is their town. We are just initiating it. All right. For sure. Hey, I'm cool with Snarfibblin here. We just got to... Uh, we have to come up with like a good bait what about like the bandana does he have like a fun like a mushroom or something that's like got red blood whatever color his blood is maybe we can stain the bandana bandana's a good idea but a dog's gonna look at Bordy and just be like if you grow an extra finger and we cut it off does it stay off <laughs> this is... I'm not. I, I don't have. I'm not a lizard, dude. I don't have any regenerative properties, brother. But Causes you can make less fingers. I can make less, sort of. But can you make more fingers, and then. <laughs> no, I can feel it too. No, it's a full metal alchemist shit. Oh, this is it's awful. If Why don't I just transform here, into? <laughs> Why don't I just transform into Rambo over here? Yeah, we could use you as bait too. It's true. Yes, but he he would like to, unless you want to ambush him, and you're the one that's tied up. 
I mean, that's fine. I could just just keep it loose, you know, so I could, you know, wiggle on out of there and uh, no. That's me. <laughs> Uh, That's no, not Sony. a character. No. I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I. I think it's an okay idea. Like. I like the bandana. I like the bandana as well. We can just combo it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. I'll. I'll wave down the snarfiblin. Snarfiblin. Mm, I prefer to stay up here, but fine. Well, we gotta down. we gotta go back to like the village, you know. Are you okay to assassinate this orc? Mm -hmm. As long as not all the other orcs are around while I do it. Well, we will try and keep them out. Mm -hmm. Give me a persuasion check. Did we see him with bodyguards when he walked out of his cave? Twelve. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. What'd you say? Twelve. Twelve. I am wary of this. There are orcs that are very loyal to him, but perhaps I have crushed their morale by picking them off one by one. And he goes, and he kind of like points with his knife, and there's just like six orcs hanging upside down, all still alive, but they're like hanging upside down from one of the big mushrooms. He goes, <laughs> already started pretty successfully. Okay, well here's my thing. Why don't we us and the Bing Bang twins, the East Side orcs, and Krusk, Krunk, Krunk, will hold back the rest of the orcs while Krusk and you, you know, dilly dally. Let me, uh, can I also, before that happens, like turn to the orcs that are hanging? They're, they're alive, right? They're not like super beat up. They're just alive. They're, they're beat. They're beat to shit. Like they got a bunch of cuts everywhere. They're like uh, fire scars and all kinds of, but they're alive. Okay. I'll save that for later. Go ahead. I know. <clears throat> all right. Well, lead the way again not too confident in this plan but i have my ways of escaping if need be i'll just be like hey do you have like um you have like a fungus that looks like blood if you put it on something i think we should use your bandana maybe as like bait mm, okay and kind of unties the bandana you said you want blood yeah Okay, he just like cuts his arm. Oh, this guy's fucking cool. metal. He's Rambo. Come on, this guy's tired. This could have been way easier if I just transformed into you, bud. But all right. <laughs> well, we need the blood still, I think, right on the bandana. Can you bait him outside? Yeah, yeah. there's plenty of blood. Yeah, he's like orcs. He goes, wait a moment though, and he goes like over to, uh, to one of the orcs, and he like he like stabs his knife into like the orc shoulder. And then he like rips off like a piece of their clothing and wraps his like cut around with that, and then like yanks the knife back out, and the orcs. Oh. And uh, like, okay, we're good. Uh, roundabout way. Can like can we uh, also if if this all is cool, you'll let those orcs go, right? They're they didn't do anything. They're cool. If I get my weapon back and I get crust, yes, I will let them go. Weapon? Your you weapon? Invention. That was a DM slip. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. okay, yeah, okay. For sure. I was like, he's gonna, he's a nuclear bomb. I was like, ah. <laughs> Make uh, the rubies into fire. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's cool with me, bro. Internal monologue. I'm like, this guy is much different than Namfoodle. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very different. Okay. Let us go. And as he says that, I need everybody to make a perception check. Okay. Ooh, 17. 18 for me, really bad for Alex. Oh, no, 11 for Alex. 22? 22, okay. So uh, pretty much everybody, but I would say Alexander may be a little bit more distracted than the rest of you. Um, you guys all feel, <laughs> all feel the ground beneath you shake violently and start subtle for a second. And you can see as soon as it starts subtly, um, the, the Snorfiblin that you befriended, he brings out his knife and brings out his gun real quick, and then the violent, uh, the violent shaking of the earth starts happening more and more. And out from the ground in this mushroom forest are two giant bullets. And I need everybody to make a uh, initiative roll. All right, bullets. what are they? Uh, I will show you. There are big ass land sharks. I will show you in a second. Oh, a land shark NATO. A woo. What? Oh no. Sorry, chap. They saw an infinite void. I clicked the wrong thing. Uh -huh. <laughs> fix that. You got in the map. Should be with you guys on roll twenty now. Oh, it man, it's dark, chap. 
Oh I shit! Can't see. It's dark. For me? My leg. My leg. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh, it is very Whoa. dark in here. I wanted to interrogate one of the orcs hanging upside down. Uh, but I'll if say it was the... this dark, Sunny would have. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, I lit him back up. Oh, this map is cool. Yeah, this map's dope. I want to eat the mushrooms. <laughs> you gonna, you gonna die. How do you harvest mushrooms, tree? I mean, you have harvest a flashbang. Make me a salad. Oh, oops. Goes great with the truffle. <laughs> truffle. Bro, you asked these poor ass orcs if they had truffles. <laughs> she said yes. Do you guys have caviar? Have do you have? Do you have this truffle? Yeah, it's really rare. You might have one. I want the entire one. <laughs> I want a gourmet meal. I want a bucket full. I want it raw. It's raw. <laughs> Why are we <laughs> fancy feasting right now? <laughs> uh, you need to eat like six well, times like... as much food as normal for your magic weapon, right? So. Yeah, I, I don't think <laughs> one truffle will make a big difference. I just need a lot. This just eats it whole. That was sucked. That's <laughs> 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 Ooh, okay. Land shark. Land Are shark. there still traps around the outside of this area? Yes. Okay. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Good to know. Um. Okay. So, to start it off here, we have at the top of the order, we got meniscus. A meniscus. You see these two giant land shark looking things with these giant mouths just burst up out of the ground, pretty much tearing through any and all ground, like cavernous or fungi, anything that they can get their mouths into. They just tear through it with these giant claws that are just ripping through stuff as well. Um, and you see them set their sights on you and the party. What do you want to do? I'm gonna run towards the closest one. Got to the chopper, and then I just like <laughs> run to the other side, and I will rage. All righty. Give me that DA roll. A nuclear bomb goes off. <laughs> God damn! I think it goes straight to your one. thighs, and then you eight? explode. Yeah, but you definitely rolled eight plenty of times. One, seven, and eight are his rolls. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes two. That's the teleport one. Eight. Okay. Oh, is, uh, <laughs> the beam of light that answers from your chest basically it just comes out in a five foot wide, sixty foot long line. So it takes you right towards the bullet here. He's got to make a Constitution saving throw. Where is my <sighs> proton cannon? Yeah, that's basically what it is. Um, one second here. Prepare your attack. What's my con? Ooh, they got high con. Oh no! Oh, buddy, roll it to you. Um, so roll, give me 2d8 radiant damage. Nice. That's a Aren't smite. Are these blind anyways? Am I crazy? Um, let me see. They do have a tremor sense. Seven. Is that, like, is that like a sound-based thing, or is this off of, like, feel? Like... Tremor? Yeah, is that sound-based, or is it, like, based Th off of, like... It, think about, like, yeah. Toph's vision in yeah, Avatar. Yeah, yeah. I've, yeah. I've never... So it's like, so if you're nice. standing on the ground, you can feel vibrations, but when you see that vibration, imagine Daredevil. Okay, I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like Daredevil, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So it uh, does take seven radiant damage, and yeah, you can see the, the eyes of it are blinded, but of course, um, your character probably doesn't know this, but you yourself will probably know that, uh, you know, it's not the end of the bullet. Um, anything else? Uh, I will attack it. All right. Oh. Ooh, that is a plus nine. So 17 to hit? 17 just barely hits. Damn. Ooh, damn. I'd imagine um, Homeboy would know everything about these critters. Yeah, um, you'd probably safe to assume that for sure. 14 Please damage? Me. Nice, okay. And then second attack. Oh, that definitely hits. That's a 26. Oh, yeah. And then, ooh. Uh, 18 damage. 18 damage, nice. You carve into this bullet heavily. Very well done. Mm -hmm. All right, sword. All righty. Um, I will split the difference. I'm going to run Dukes of Hazard over this mushroom, and then... um. 
Yeah, just slide over Dukes of Hazard, and then I'll whip out the scimitar and just start spinning. Uh, first attack is a pull eighteen to hit. That hits. Yeah. Okay. For uh, ten slashing damage. Okay. Second attack is a twenty-seven to hit. Mm-hmm. For uh, thirteen slashing damage. Okay. And then third attack is a twenty-four to hit. Yeah. For nine slashing damage. Very nice. So. You and Meniscus split the difference, each taking on your own bullet, also doing similar damage to both as you just start carving through this rough hot uh, that they're equipped with. Do you want to do anything else? Uh, I will... I'll kind of shimmy around it, but that's, that'll be the end of my turn. All right. Dollar Rocco. Hmm. Well, I kind of want to see what would happen, what I could really do with uh, a... Give me a second. A deafness, level 2 deafness spell. Okay. I would like to cast it on the one that um, Minuscoozy is working on. Okay. Uh, I'm going to back up a little bit, though, like right here. Maybe like right here. Yeah, just hide. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> cue up my voice and just have like a deep hum and go, mm, What you say? <laughs> and, can, and then let it rip towards that thing. Um, it rolled a 17. So, Constitution saving throw 16. Okay, so it succeeds on the deafened spell. Damn it. So it kind of like Damn. looks in your direction and tilts its head weirdly at you, but it doesn't seem to be affected by the spell. That's all I got for my turn. <laughs> Alright. Um, uh, Sunny is going to fly back a little bit. These things are huge and uh, be scared. Yeah, I'm going to be like in the air, Sunny. Yeah, yeah, Sunny's gonna, gonna take to the skies and back up a bit. Um, the Snurfiblin, whose name you all still don't know, I'll is going to take out um, his uh, one of his mushroom guns, and he is going to uh, point it at the uh, point it at the bullet that Meniscus is attacking. He's gonna try and hit it. Well, first one's a miss. Second one is a hit. Four fire damage, as you see, it, it explodes in an area that's like fire damage. This little like pseudopod comes out of the end of this like mushroom like barrel that he's crafted, and it kind of explodes in this area. And you would uh, you normally get hit meniscus, but this bullet is so big that it kind of encompasses the entire radius of this explosion, and it just takes the fire damage to it. Oh, um, uh, a talk. It is your turn. Um. Okay, I have an idea. So I sort of know how Tremor Sense works. Mm -hmm. I've had it before. So I'm going to... Um, okay, let me give it. Uh, I'm going to run similar path as Soren as to avoid traps. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I make it here. And mm -hmm. then I'm going to jump off of the mushroom instead of sliding off of it. And I'm okay. going to bonus action throw my horn like away from me a little bit like i don't know like this direction okay um as i come down with a solar blade so i'm just gonna jump up i just gonna just throw it and then come down like ah solar blade <laughs> give me a nature check real quick uh a lot uh 21 okay so you will know you would know that these things also do have regular sight so if you wanted to try to take advantage of the like it being blind and then manipulating its tremor sets, it's probably best to do it on this one because that's the blind. Oh one. yeah, I fucking forgot it's that one. Fuck it, I'm still doing it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna confuse it. Uh, <laughs> what is this guy doing? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm gonna do that and I'll I'll attack him. And then you solo like got it. For oh, almost a twenty. <laughs> It's a 19. Um, 28. Uh, hits, yeah. Okay. 
roll my dice. Uh, oh, yeah, you got sneak attack. Um, 16, uh, 22 damage. Damn, okay. With sneak attack and subway blade damage. Pretty good. Uh, and that's my turn. All right, very nice as you uh, jump off the mushroom, slash into it with your solar blade. Very effective. It takes a huge chunk out of its high end, and it's the beginning. It already is starting to bleed like this this viscous, dark green blood. Um, Alexander. I talked that one, Kadang Don C, uh, and then he's going to very <laughs> carefully. Um, <laughs> he's going to very carefully move like, half speed to avoid any traps and then hide over here. Oh shit! Uh, that dang gonna see. That dang gonna go, go see, Elizabeth man. Uh, he's going to sell for a nineteen, <laughs> and then a he's going to fire a card at this one. Any card, okay? For a lot. Um, he has a banish because he's a yeah. Um. So it's like 23 or something? Yeah, it hits. Okay. His cards are D4. Oh yeah. god, that was good. What what in tarnation? Oh wow, he rolled. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna fucking throw cards at all of us um, when he gets back. Oh I rolled one more, so let me do this. Um right at our ankles too. Oh no, that's right. 5, 10, 16, 21 damage. 21 damage, very nice, very nice. And then he'll um Hold on, I'm trying to see how his. Oh, then he was going to do one of his card things, and it was a one, I believe, the damage on the the card. Okay. So whatever that means. Uh... There's a little table. Okay. Oh, yeah, Blade, yeah. roll your sneak attack damage and add it to your razor card's damage at the start of your next turn. So it was a four, five, and six. So oh. it was um, nine. Um, Fifteen. Fifteen. So half of that so it's seven he takes next okay so i'll do that now so we don't have to keep track of him okay um all right so okay so yeah he, he uh flings a card out definitely slices through the hide of this uh bullet who is uh, yeah blinded in the eyes now and it's kind of like tangled up with meniscus and you know very light on his feet alexander managing to avoid the tremor sense and hide successfully throws it at the bullet which slices into him now it is the other bullet's turn um, let me see here. This is the one with Soren and a talk. Uh, okay. He is going to attempt a bite attack. Let's see here. Uh, he will do it on. Let me just roll a d2 here. Oops, sorry. One is Soren, two is a talk. All right, a talk. I'm unhittable. <laughs> Natural 20. <laughs> oh no, that's bad. Yeah, so it is. I'm just gonna roll in here because it's a lot of dice. Oh no! Oh god! Is he a one attack creature? That's a lot of dice. He he is a one attack creature, so it is a lot of dice. Oh, you're dead. You're down. You take seventy damage. You're dead. What? I'm dead. All right. Um. So the bullet is, uh, scoops up after taking the damage after you throw the uh whatever you threw. It's kind of uh throw it off its tremor sense. Decides to take care of you first, and it just <laughs> I opens it. <laughs> it opens its mouth wide and just bites you clean in half. Um, and you guys see this uh, bullet just uh, like now frothing at the mouth, looking crazed from the damage it's taken already, and your little companion just bitten clean in half. Uh, I would, uh, I would leave, but I am playing Alexander. So that's true. Yeah, <laughs> you are playing Alexander. You insta died. Oh man. Oh shit, uh, I didn't think I'd do that yep, much. I have 32 total health. Um, yep, that's... <laughs> that's an insta Yeah, game. so yeah, the, you needed 64 for the insta give. Yep, indeed. And my son just watched me. Yeah, yeah dude. Sunny this is spirit transfer into Sunny. <laughs> we had no way of communicating with the dragon. Help, <laughs> too. <laughs> Fuck. <That's true. laughs> we only have my books. What am I supposed to do with these damn books? Oh, uh, boy. Okay. That was a good turn. <laughs> Uh, it's the other bullet's turn now. Um, meniscus, you are in range. Can you put an axe through or a skull on a toxic picture, please? <laughs> sure. 
I think we need a moment of silence. Um, the bullet does hit, I believe, because you rolled a 24. Yep, that hits. But of course, it is not a crit. Um, Why didn't he hit me? Oh, God. 35 have to 17, because you're raging. Yep, I'm glad I'm raging. I just realized, wait, fuck. I don't know if I could have done cutting words. No, it's a natural 20. It's a natural 20. Oh, he can reduce the damage. Oh, okay. He can reduce the damage. He can reduce it to matter anyways. He can yeah. reduce the damage. Uh, if you rolled an 8. He could reduce the oh. damage. But he how much do you have to? to? He'd have to okay, roll. I will, I will okay, allow, let's I will allow this. If you, <sighs> want to damage. you have to roll very high. So it's a D8, right? It is a D8. Your health is 32, right? You need to roll a seven or an eight. That's a lot of pressure, gang. That's a lot of pressure. I forgot about cutting words. Damage, and it, if, even if you reduce it by six, it's still sixty-four. So you yeah. need a seven or an eight. Oh, a seven! A seven! It's a seven! I swear to God, it's a seven! I swear to God, it's a seven! Is it? I swear am I to God. still dead if it's if it's the same as my because it's thirty-two? No, it has six, six would have been the same. So seven is okay. It, I guess it would be one. sixty-three damage, and sixty-four is what you need to be instant. Okay, okay. So, Cutting words, um, bro. Ooh, I'll put the camera on this bad bitch. Look yeah, at that. I, I believe. You, I believe. It's you. a seven. Oh, seven. Oh, go, Jeremy. <laughs> Ooh. So Ooh. You, see, you see this, Donald Brock? In the in. <laughs> I was gonna, I was gonna mention somebody, but their name is better left off the show. Um, in slow motion here, just uh, fucking yeah. You can put the pieces of the puzzle together now. You see in slow motion this bullet just coming for a talk, and he like slashing into the solar blade. One of his most successful solar blades ever. It definitely feels confident about this. But the bullet <laughs> is so enraged from the damage it's taken that it goes and goes to cut him clean in half, and it does bite him nearly in half. But your arcane magic words of the cutting words allow it to kind of you kind of like piece the with your healing magic a little bit kind of piece that torso back together so it doesn't completely split in half and you could see a talk is mangled on the ground um barely breathing like very very shallow breaths <laughs> he's on the verge of just dying outright but you could see now that his torso is barely hanging on and he is still with you in the living world as roll right back now. wins again <laughs> Did I get? <laughs> he's, just, he's just speaking to the clouds. Did I get him, mother? <laughs> <laughs> you did good, kid. You did good. <laughs> I see the You're sun. Good. Finally, I can go for the sun. I get yanked back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> Take me, mother. <laughs> You're just flying up to the sun. You're just like the afterlife. Ooh. It's so warm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's Ooh. go roll back. Ooh. Oh, man. Uh, Alright, Meniscus, it is your turn. Our show was oh, almost shit. named Cutting Words, by the way. That's pretty funny. <laughs> That's true, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a big rock in the way, so I can't see a talk almost die, so I'm just gonna keep tacking into this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that's 17 to hit again. That hits, yeah. Uh, plus nine. I was typing a message so, to our artist. Hey, could you do an emergency commission? <laughs> uh, 14 damage. 14 damage, okay. And then second attack. Holy. Uh, I can't believe it. 19, 19 to hit. That hits. And another 14 damage. Very nice, very nice. Oh, yeah, this bullet is starting to look rocked now. It's still love, but it's definitely not going to be able to take too much damage from here. I'm gonna try something. I'm gonna try a hammering horns, and I'm gonna just push him. Let's just say left to try to trigger a random booby trap that I've never seen before, but <laughs> okay. at chance. Okay, so he's got to make a strength saving throw. Yeah, I think it's of uh, how much? Fourteen? Uh, sixteen. Sixteen is 16. the save. All right, he fails. Now give me a luck check to see if there's actually a trap there. Just your roll a d20 for me. D20. Okay. Thirteen. All right, that is the number I had in my head. So uh, you uh, successfully get that, the 13th. Um, and I will say it is one of these. It is one of the uh, fire explosion traps. So let's see here. Hit the talk. Uh, uh, give me a uh, give me a 46 roll. 
Damn. 4d6, okay. Uh, 14. 14. 14. Again. Nice. Good shit. So yeah, you hammering horns them over these uh, mushrooms right here, and you see all of a sudden they just kind of he steps on a plant, and for a second he like cartoonishly looks down, and you just see an explosion from under his feet, and he just immediately gets burned and scarred, and he lets out like this weird bullet wail. Um, he's still up, but he is looking super fucked up. Perfect. Um, very nice. Good thinking there, meniscus. Anything else? Nope. That is all. All right, Sora. I look down at the talk. He seems fine. I'll um, <laughs> I'll swing, <laughs> I'll swing at the bullet. I look back at uh, what's Dollar Brock. I'm like, hey, bro, nice work. You got to pick this guy up. Keep on keeping on, and I'll swing at the guy. Uh, 25 to hit. Mm-hmm. And I'll do a first level smite. I'm assuming he's not a undead fiend. No, Dang. he is a monstrosity. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, so <laughs> I do 12 slashing. Nice. And 9 radiant. Oof, okay. And then He's looking super fucked up now as well. Second attack. Uh, natural one. Third attack. <laughs> I just get all hype. It's like this glowing blue energy, and I just like slice through. I'm like, bro, I spin it around, and it gets stuck in a mushroom. I'm like, nah. <laughs> I pull it out of the mushroom. I'm like, god damn it. All right, got it. Uh, 24 to hit. Four. Yeah. Uh, nine slashing. Very nice, very nice. Okay. It's still up, but yeah, it is bleeding from all kinds of cuts and stabs you've made with your double bladed scimitar. And it is uh, looking on its last legs. Do you want to do anything else? Uh, no, that'll be my turn. Balabraca. Oh boy. Let's do this shit. Okay. First of all, healing word, level three on a talk. <laughs> okay. 100%. Uh, mm -hmm. You cannot. Kill my allies <laughs> is uh, the classic. Um, five D six for that bad boy. So we're... Oh, there it is. <laughs> Fuck you, lame. Okay, hold on. Are they D fours? Yeah, five D four. It would be three D four. I'm yeah, three D four. I'm tri I'm tripping. I read the wrong thing. I was excited. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I heal him for ninety eight. <laughs> Super upgrade. Three D fours. Uh, three. Four and eight. Thirteen total. Okay. Not bad. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The rest of that torso that cause it's still split pretty deep, kind of seals itself back together and you have life breathed into you at all. Mm, uh, I'm like freaked out. <laughs> I changed voices. Get out of there now, you idiots! <laughs> Um, I also cast Vicious Mockery at the fella that, uh, Soren's fighting. Okay. I haven't, I haven't produced any bars yet, so, because I'm still in shock of, uh, Atak almost dying, so. And it does fail at saving throw. Yes! Hold that shit, you dumb bitch! That's what I say, probably. Uh, okay. 2d4, right? Yes. Yeah. Four? Oh, shit. And disadvantage I'm... on his next bite. Five. That's good. Five damage. Five damage, very nice, very nice. And just disadvantage, as you mentioned. Okay. Yeah, and this bullet looking <laughs> like it's not long for this plane uh, here with that vicious mockery. Um, next up, do you want to do anything else before I move on? Uh, I'm going to move towards Sunny a little bit. Okay. Your dad's fine. Uh, that's it. <laughs> that's all I got. Sunny. <laughs> <laughs> yells in draconic attack and he flies over no oh no and you he fool to, uh fire breath this fucking bullet just nice. a chain explosion in the background sets off all the traps yeah. <laughs> we're, we're getting we're getting some fillets tonight <laughs> he succeeds but um he still does take half damage Um, <laughs> ooh, and he had five health left, and that does five damage. Perfect. Hell yes. Sonny, in his rage, seeing a talk, it almost nearly bitten in half, 
flies over and lets out a, a way bigger fire breath that you've ever seen him let out before. He usually kind of controls it a bit and just blows fire here and there for his own entertainment, but he full on builds up the lung. You can see the cartoon build up in the chest and just <laughs> lets out a huge fire breath at this bullet who cooks and falls over lifeless. Just thumbs up on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the Snurfivlin is going to again make some attacks at the one that's living. First, gets for the second. Nice. 16 total damage. Ooh, this one looks not long for this world either. A talk is your turn. Uh, I'm going to stand up wearily and just be like mother we almost we were almost together and i just look at my hand and then i just go sore blast and i just fucking blast this mother guy okay solar bolt uh yeah, okay. fireball. whoa that's a lot um 24. that hits and it's fire damage um 10 fire damage Ooh, you smoke him. I look at Sonny and just be like, like father, like son. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. I think we got to call it on that. That's too good of an ending scene right there, brother. That's too powerful. So you uh, put your fireball, you lay out your lizard hand, and it just... Uh, Burst this bullet down as he catches one straight fire to the face. Like in his mouth as he opens it up, it goes straight down. And you can see the fire kind of build up in his stomach before it heats him up from the inside. And it falls over lifeless as well as you all kind of look at each other. Know how close a talk was to uh, getting smoked for real. And I Ooh. think we'll pick it up next time. <laughs> Just look around. Bros, that was real easy. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't see a tog down and yeah. like a bit and off, so I'm like, man, eh, that, that wasn't too bad. Look around. Oh, his <laughs> <laughs> guts are on the line. Yeah. The good it's news like is we got spider. lots of blood to wipe on the bandana, and I would say you have another gnarly scar for sure. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. His got stomach. A fun midsection scar. <laughs> now I'm thinking. Dollar's just thinking. Yeah, he fucking owes me on that one. <laughs> another, <laughs> another one, of, another one on the board for good he, old. Brocker. He's only threatened your life nine times. Oh, he owed me. And you saved his ass. This cutting I'm, words. Gonna, I'm just gonna slide over to the corner. But did you die though? That's it. That's all I'm gonna say. Every time there's an argument, is what I'm gonna say. Hundred percent. You said oh, that though. Man, you said, did you die? Over you. Yeah. But but did you die though? <laughs> Thanks for coming through, everybody. Hanzo lived. I was about to emergency message yeah, our artist you. tonight and be like, hello. <laughs> There's been a you know, you know what I was thinking? I was like, okay, how we meet my second character. <laughs> <laughs> just comes out of the forest. Here he is. Yeah. <laughs> just, he just helped. Mushrooms. He just jumps in, stabs one of them, looks at us, survive. <laughs> Leaps <laughs> off into the fucking forest again. We got to find him. That was almost that other week when I had two death savings. Was that last week where I was getting destroyed? I was like telling, I said after the session, I was like, yeah, you guys are just going to walk around, meet a cat man. You know, you're just going to be around the corner. Hey, gang. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's how D&D &D works. When like someone dies, the next character just, oh, was walking in the tunnels. Didn't see you guys there. Like, <laughs> Hey there, the hey there, Phyllis. Hey there, Phyllis. The other day up. I was talking about how like a talk just down got down to every session. I feel like I just cursed the whole session instead. <laughs> <laughs> just, he got more than down this time. That was very close. That was a 25% chance success rate on the cutting words, and he got it. Clutch. Oh, man. Can't believe it. Man, what? man was 1v1, just one tapped him with the vandal. Just poof, easy. Hell yeah, dude. I was so nervous. I was like, dude, he's gonna die. He's gonna die. And it turned out to be seven. I was I almost actually hit my microphone on the way up. I, was like, oh, I mean <laughs> it's not like he was going to die. He was dead. <laughs> like that oh, was yeah. that was the situation. Man, not official. Yeah. Roll back. Definitely Roll back. Save me. Yeah, that was good work. He's not, he's not happy about it. He wants a new character. No, I love a talk. <laughs> he loves a talk. That's why he was so like, yeah. He loves it. It's like if a talk yeah. died, he's dead. <laughs>
Yeah. It's going to be like an air cooker that comes out of nowhere. It's like, I'm here to help the poor. Bra. <laughs> uh, well, the nice <laughs> thing. Admiral yeah. Bra. Yeah. Hanzo's creations are always great. So it would have been fun. But I like hanging out with the talk. Uh, okay. Oh. So, so that's it for this week. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the sesh. Hopefully Elder's feeling better so he can come back uh, next week. You know, he's been out of it. Today, what's messed up is, like, yesterday he was, like, not feeling so great. And today seems like it's bad, too. So hopefully he's feeling better. It's been, like, a week and some change. Uh, so I hope that uh, he can join us next week. If not, yeehaw, he's back in the yeah. saddle. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it'll be fun to play Alexander again. Uh, thanks for coming through, everybody. I'll send you guys somewhere. Steve's usually streaming at this time. I guess I can see if he's streaming. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, so uh, thanks for coming through, everybody. We'll catch you guys again next week. Have a good one, chat room, and we'll catch you guys around. Peace. Bye. Peace. Ooh.